Hello and welcome back. Uh, so in this video we're looking at the uh, normal probability distribution again. Uh, and and uh, we're going to use it to calculate probabilities of events occurring or, or not occurring for that matter. So here, let's uh, let's get into it. So whether you're a student or professional, uh, you've probably in, attended meetings with, uh, with your colleagues or your, your peers, your friends, and your for a group project or something. During my student and professional life, I don't think I've ever attended a meeting that has started exactly on time. Uh, so assume the time relative to a meeting start time is a normally distributed variable. The variable takes a value of zero when the meeting starts on time. It's positive when it starts late and it's negative when it starts early. So in my current employment, meetings seem to start on average 10 minutes late with a standard deviation of 3.9 minutes. Yes, I've just made these numbers up. <laughs> I don't actually measure these these types of things. Okay, what is the probability that a meeting starts exactly on time? Well, as is a characteristic of any continuous probability distribution, uh, the probability of a precise value occurring is effectively zero because every value can occur, uh, you know, to every decimal places, to a million decimal places. Um, so the, the, the probability of any exact value occurring, so if x equals zero, uh, meaning it starts exactly on time, this is equal to zero. It's impossible for it to start exactly on time because maybe it'll start 0 .00000 many, many, many zeros, one uh, seconds early or equally uh, small number late. So. The probability of that exact value occurring in a continuous probability distribution is zero. What is the probability that a meeting starts early? Okay, let's get into uh, let's get into our drawing some pictures. So here, it's helpful always to keep in mind, oops, to keep in mind that we are working with two distributions simultaneously. There's this population distribution. And so this, this is the distribution of whatever is our, our variable of interest that we're, that we're looking at. In this exercise, there's this population distribution, or sometimes called distribution of observations, it's what we're observing, uh, is uh, the, the time that a meeting starts relative to, to uh, it's when it's supposed to start. And so here we have a mean value for this population of 10. So it starts an average uh, of 10 minutes late. Now, in addition, oh, we also know it's uh, standard deviation is 3.9. Now, in addition to our population distribution, keep in mind that we will always be working with the standard normal distribution. The standard normal distribution has a mean of zero and standard deviation of one. It's always helpful when we're working with these types of problems, particularly with the normal probability distribution, because there's going to be so many applications of this distribution. It's helpful to always keep these two in mind and, and to be able to go back and forth between them. So what we need to do, uh, we have to translate a value from one into another. So if we're looking at part B, the probability that a meeting starts early. Well, if on average it starts 10 minutes late, then starting early, so that value of zero is somewhere over here. The probability that it starts early then is the area under the curve to the left of zero. So the probability that it's zero or, or, or negative. So here we're looking at the probability that X, that meeting time is less than or equal to zero. Well, in order to calculate that probability, we need to translate this into our standard normal distribution. So we need to find that Z score that corresponds with that value of interest in our population distribution. So that, pr that probability that X is less than or equal to zero, that's gonna be equal to the probability that Z is less than or equal to whatever is that critical value that, that we'll, we'll figure out, uh, that value of interest. So what we need to do here, we've got all of the values, we can just plug these into our formula. So x, this is zero, our average of that distribution is 10, and our standard deviation here is just 3.9. 
So that means that Z is going to be equal to, let me find a calculator here. So Z is equal to, uh, well this is negative 10 divided by 3.9, so 256, negative 256. So this Z here I'm going to erase, and this is negative 2.56. And so up here, the probability that x is less than or equal to zero, that's equal to the probability that z is less than or equal to negative 256. Okay, so that's this area under the curve here. So what we can do, we'll just go to our z distribution tables, and we just need to look up, these are all um, cumulative probabilities, so these are all probabilities, values that give us probabilities to the left of whatever is our value of interest, and that's exactly what we want, right? In our problem, we're looking for that area to the left of negative 256. So when we go to our table, and we find here's negative 2.56, and so where those come together, that gives us here that probability. So that's as if this is 256, which means this probability is 0 0.0052, that area under the curve there. So coming back to our problem, here we have then that this probability of x being less than zero, so starting early, is equal to 0 0.0052. And so there's our answer for part B is 0 0.0052, so pretty slim chance of starting early. What is the probability that our meeting starts late? Well, that's just a complement to starting early, right? We know that it's not going to start exactly on time, so it's either going to start early or it's going to start late. And here we've already calculated this area under the curve is 0 0.0052, and so the complement to that, well, that's this area out here. So the probability that x is greater than greater than zero, greater than or equal to, the equality doesn't really matter in this calculation, is equal to the probability that z is greater than or equal to negative 256. And that's just a complement of what we just calculated, right? That's this blue space here. So that then is equal to 1 minus the probability that z is less than or equal to negative 256, which is what we've just calculated. So this, the answer to part c then, is just 1 minus 0 0.0052. So when I grab my calculator here, let's move this out of the way. So 1 minus 0 0.0052, so 0.9948. So the probability of starting late is equal to 0.9948. Okay, good. Part D, what is the probability that a meeting starts at least 20 minutes late? Okay, so now we're looking at, in our population distribution, here's 20. And I want to know the probability that it starts at least 20 minutes late. So that's 20 minutes late or more. So that would be then this area here. Well, just as we did before, we need to find the corresponding Z statistic or Z score in our Z distribution. So if we recalculate this, you can maybe predict what it's going to be because notice both of these are the same distance from the mean. They're both 10 minutes or 10 units away from the mean. So here we have 20 minus 10 over 3.9. That hasn't changed. So the numerator, the value is still 10 uh, in absolute value. It was negative 10. Now it's positive 10. So this is going to be positive 256. So there's positive 256. So now what we're looking for the probability of starting at least 20 minutes late, well that's equal to the probability that z is greater than or equal to positive 256. So what do you think that's going to be? Well, 
we know that this normal distribution is perfectly symmetric. You fold it in half, it's going to lie exactly on top of itself. And here we have already calculated this probability that corresponds to negative 256. That probability in that lower tail below negative 256 is 0 0.0052. So we can sort of jump through some of the conclusion or some of the calculations or even looking that up in the table. And I tell you right now that this upper tail probability is going to be exactly the same, 0 0.0052. So I'm going to I'm going to cheat. I'm going to say this probability that it is greater than or equal to 20 is 0 0.0052. Now, let's just go through the the process so that you can sort of see why that's the case. I'm going to clear myself some space up here. And we'll just see what happens. So what I want is the probability that x is greater than or equal to 20. This is equal to the probability, oops, the probability that z is greater than or equal to 2.56. Now our tables, of course, are only giving us uh, the cumulative probability. So if I look this up in the table, it's going to give me this probability here, right? Because that's just how it's designed. They're designed to give us those cumulative probabilities, which is that probability to the left of our value of interest. And what I want is the complement to that. So what I'm looking for is that this is going to be equal to one minus the probability that Z is less than or equal to 256. Right, and that will then give me this upper tail um, probability. So if we look that up in our tables, so if I look up positive 256, I come down here, there's 2.56, and so where those come together right here, 0.9948, we've seen that number before, haven't we? There it is right there. So this probability is 1 minus 0.9948, which is equal to 1 minus 0.9948, wouldn't you know it, 0 0.0052, which is what we have already calculated. So there you go, uh, a little bit of practice using these tables and hopefully also gain you, you gain some comfort in knowing uh, how to take advantage of the symmetry of this distribution. You can take some shortcuts uh, in obtaining your probabilities. I strongly advise only taking shortcuts once you are very comfortable uh, with how this probability distribution works. Uh, otherwise, those shortcuts can just lead you in all the wrong directions. So uh, hopefully this was helpful. Thanks again for watching, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, see some more videos. Great, thanks. Bye-bye.